everyone, this is Mel with Smarter Bodies and this is the fourth video in the series about addressing frozen shoulder or really any kind of shoulder dysfunction. And I'm going to show you right now one move that I like to use with my clients to help them find ease in how they seat the head of the humerus into the joint space. And this is working with the principle of joint centration. Basically, you're just going to be placing the head of the humerus in the most efficient and advantageous position for movement. Um, joint centration technically means that you're creating an equal amount of negative space around the head of the joint, the head of the, of the humerus in this context, the head of the humerus as it's city, seated in the joint space. You can't guarantee that unless you're looking at an x-ray or an MRI, but you can feel when you've created a movement that helps to release tension. So I'm going to show you right now. It's very simple. And we're going to start using some of the techniques that we talked about in the other videos. It's for later. And here I'm just going to relax. I'm lying back. And I'm start, going to start working on just lifting up my arm and really my hand to the ceiling. I want to avoid this movement. I want to avoid over protraction or this, too much work in my neck here. I also want to avoid overworking the retraction of my scapula in order to find that sense that it's grounded. It's, it's a movement that is much smoother and more organic in how it feels. So if you're feeling too much effort in any one way, this is where you want to start taking your breathing and focusing deeply inside the body and feel like you can just make this smooth and fluid rise of the hand to the ceiling happen while feeling a sense of ease in the joint. No clicking, ideally, even if the clicking is pain-free, but definitely no pain. And you can see I'm keeping it just perpendicular to my body and to the ceiling. I am not trying at, at all trying to bring this arm overhead. And of course I want to get a sense of ease in my breath. And that's it. And it looks exceedingly simple, but it's very effective. If you want to add strength to this, once you've established it, you can make this happen easily, you can start adding a weight. Um, I like kettlebells. I find them very useful for activating grip, rotator cuff reflexes, um, in concurrence with movement or activation in the core. I'm going to demonstrate with a kettlebell that is really inappropriately heavy because it's the only kettlebell I have in the house. I recommend no more than five pounds. So, and I, and I should handle this in the way that you typically want to handle a kettlebell. So I want to have this bell with me here. I'm going to bring it close to my chest, bring it into my body. And again, five pounds is way different than handling a five pound kettlebell. I'm gonna make sure that the kettlebell is seated on my wrist properly, that there's no pain there. I wanna keep my knuckles facing the ceiling and I will not be moving my arm up and down anymore. That was just to establish that you know where you want it to sit in the joint. And here I'm simply holding the kettlebell and breathing. Now, this is already work. This is 15 pounds. Again, this is an inappropriate use for therapeutic practices, I, an inappropriate weight. I would only stick to five pounds. Um, and if you needed to add more of a challenge, you would flip the kettlebell so it was upside down, and then really have to work hard in your grip and in your rotator cuff. But this is enough right here to just breathe. Make sure I'm not overusing neck muscles, I'm not overly retracting, I'm feeling really positive and happy in the way this is seated here. There's no pain. If you want to activate your core, some people like to do this um, in conjunction with some kind of dead bug move, and this is a great way to start supporting and reconnecting the shoulder girdle to your deeper core. And that's language that's kind of touching upon another conversation, but a clue of how this can progress. And that's it, and of course, even if you're handling only five pounds, you wanna make sure you bring that kettlebell safely down and roll with it to one side. So that's how you start reestablishing a, 
a movement practice beyond breathing and some of the easier patterns we covered in the last video of retraction, protraction, and all of that. It's a way to start advancing the practice and reseating the joint properly and even adding a level of strength training to that. So let me know what you think when you try it and have a wonderful time. Thank you. Bye.